Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. This is from USGS, a scenario about a 7.2 earthquake there along the Seattle Fault. Many people don't realize that the Seattle Fault can be as damaging, if not worse, if the Cascadia Fault moves, erupts, ruptures. The last time this fault line ruptured was about a thousand years ago and has built up a lot of stress since then. Scientists know that quiet earthquakes occur about every 14 months and during that uh, probably two week period a large earthquake could happen along the Cascadia Fault Zone. They call these earthquakes quiet quakes or tremors, not actual earthquakes even though they probably should be listed as earthquakes. Some are like this one, a 2.2. These earthquakes should not be occurring right now. They have 96 earthquakes listed here on pnsn.org. This was on the 26th. On the 27th, the number dropped to only 28. They're always a day behind in reporting, you know, the quiet tremors. And then yesterday, there was 79 tremors. Oral history handed down by the Native Americans about the last great quake that happened in this area. Talks about how the ground lifted up, other areas sunk down, landslides that occurred, yeah, with giant boulders, how two types of beings fought in the ocean and in the bay. The, the waters boiled during that earthquake. They say it was a serpent that was in the ocean and then a bird that came from on land and conquered the, the uh, serpent and carried it off to the mountains. What's also interesting about the oral history of the earthquake that took place over a thousand years ago there was that during this battle um, the mountains, the volcanoes roared during that time. There's no reports of eruption of volcanoes but that the fact that the volcanoes, the mountains roared. Here's one of the drawings about the two-headed snake. Yeah, they said it was a two-headed snake that had the battle. Again, this image comes from Wikipedia. Uh, Jay Johnson evidently um, gave approval. It says here, out of copyright. You know, I talk about how geology for earthquakes and volcanology for volcanoes is Oh, at least a hundred hundred years behind in science. This fault line was not discovered until 1992. There's scarps there, very large scarps. That's where uplift happens during the earthquakes. And magnetic anomalies. They didn't discover the magnetic anomalies until 1965. So the government, along with USGS, put together a scenario of what could happen if there was a 7.2 earthquake on this fault zone. Yeah, there would be a lot of destruction in this area. Just outside of Seattle, across the Puget Sound, they have an area called the Toe Jam Hill Scarp. It's a um, east-west trending fault. It's largely obscured because of the growth of, and the, you know, the changes. But you can kind of see it here. Areas of lakes, uh, swampy areas are off also an indication of um, fault zones. On Research Gate, they have an image of that fault zone. Here it shows Mossy Lane. Uh, we also got another image here. This was posted by OPB Radio. And it's at the s southern section of Brain Bridge Island. Zooming in too, you can see where the shoreline has raised up. And you can follow it all along all the way out to the point. Yeah, this is the old original shoreline, but now because of uplift, yeah, all this is exposed now. The 7.2 earthquake that they predict someday will happen is considered a shallow crustal earthquake. Shallow earthquakes are a lot more damaging than deep earthquakes. Aftershocks would, would also bring um, a lot more damage to already you know, weakened buildings. Many areas would have liquefaction, 
um, yeah, causing um, deep tanks such as gas tanks and things like that to rise up, pipes to rise up, other buildings and infrastructure to sink. This fault is about 42 miles. They figure between 17 and 18 thousand people would be injured and millions of dollars in damage. In this location of the map in the last week there's been 42 earthquakes. Looks like the largest was a 2.6 on the 26th of this month, November. That had a depth of 12.8 kilometers. So that would be about seven and a half miles deep up there by Everett. Today there was a 0 0.4 a 1.9 where is that one at that one's down south a little bit farther and we got a 1.7 yesterday that one was a little bit east of Redmond for some reason no one's talking about these earthquakes or the potential for the Seattle fault yeah I like to know why I suppose they just don't want to create a panic. We won't know how many earthquakes have occurred today until tomorrow. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Please subscribe. Thank you for your support. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.